Yes, it is 100% possible to install a Zabbix server, proxy, front-end, agent, agent 2 on a Raspberry Pi. You don't need a big powerful machines for the Zabbix. For some home lab monitoring or IoT stuff, the Raspberry Pi will be fully sufficient. And I will show you how. So I was cleaning a closet and found uh, my own Raspberry Pi that I haven't used for a while and uh, configured it, plugged it in. It's connected to my network and basically right now I have it here. Uh, my my Raspberry device, which is on the version uh, 10, I think, uh, OS release. Uh, yeah, version 10 Buster, which is not the most recent one, but the logic will remain the same. Like, it's not a big difference. And uh, to better show um, how to do that, I also spin up a Docker environment on my another virtual machine, uh, which has a Zabbix server. So in this video, what we're gonna do, we will install the proxy on the Raspberry Pi, not a server because I already have a video about a server installation, which is not on a Raspberry Pi, but the steps are very, very similar. So I think it doesn't make much sense. Okay, so what we have here, we, well, I have a Zabbix frontend version 6.4 and we will use it to add a proxy to it and actually see that it's working. Then if we want to install the proxy, the first thing that you definitely want to do is uh, you want to have your Raspberry Pi with an internet connection. Uh, let's say in my example, if I just ping uh, Google, everything is fine. The network is there. And uh, I think with the embedded devices, with the Raspberry, more often you could get a case that you don't have an internet connection. Let's say if uh, the Raspberry Pi is deployed somewhere in the basement or, or whatever else where you don't have an internet, at least for the installation of the Zabbix, you should have it. Not like it would be really a mandatory thing, but it will make your life much easier because of course to deploy a Zabbix, you need to download a couple of packages from the Zabbix repository and you could download them separately but the thing is that each of those packages has many dependencies that uh, your system your Raspberry Pi will also try to download and yes it is possible to get a full list of uh, packages and dependencies that you need download them offline then move them to the Raspberry Pi and install locally but again it, be, it will be much more convenient and easier if you just connect your Raspberry Pi at least least to the mobile hotspot uh, over Wi-Fi to download everything, set it up, and then you can forget about internet connection. So uh, to install anything, we of course have to go to the green download button in azabix.com and then be careful about the uh, choosing the version. Uh, I think that in the case of, again, embedded environment, uh, it might not be as necessary to um, chase for the latest versions, probably just need a monitoring because why am I saying this? Like we need to look on operating system distribution for a Raspberry Pi operating system and take a look on a 6.4 Raspberry Pi. Uh, I have a version 10 buster. You see, we don't even have a server. And to be honest, I don't know at this point, why is that like, like this? Are there some um, library uh, dependencies or whatever? Uh, probably because on 11 version of the Raspberry Pi, it is available. Long story short, make sure that uh, your Raspberry Pi version is compatible with the Zabbix version that you're trying to install. Since I have a version 10, that's also one of the reasons why I will install only the proxy. So version 6.4, just like we have my Zabbix server from the Dockers, then the Raspberry Pi operating system and operating system version is 10 Buster. I will be installing the proxy database. Which one should you choose? Like whenever you would be running on uh, bare metal or, or a virtual machine in, um, I don't know, AWS or whatever, with a decent amount of the resources, I would probably suggest to go with a MySQL. But if we're going with a Raspberry Pi uh, embedded device, which has, I think, one gig of RAM, at least my version of Raspberry, uh, we want to save as much resources as possible. And MySQL potentially will be too heavy uh, database engine to run on this embedded environment. So I would suggest to go small and go with SQLite, which is also a database, but it's just a database in one single file. You don't, it, and it's also going to be easier in terms of uh, installation and configuration. You don't need to create a user, create a database. Everything will happen automatically. The only thing that you will have to do is provide uh, one configuration parameter in the proxy config file. 
So when we've choosed everything, uh, version 6.4, Raspberry Pi, 10, uh, proxy, SQLite database support, without a web server for the proxy, of course, in the bottom, we will have a list of the commands that we need to execute. And hopefully, I'm actually doing this for, for the first time, and hopefully it's going to be just a copy paste. So first of all, we are um, getting the repository, and I will copy paste it in my uh, Raspberry machine. I will add, uh, just to be sure, sudo in front. Uh, this one, uh, the certificate is not trusted. The certificate has expired. That's interesting. Okay, to be honest, it was not too interesting. Uh, I think so. As I told you in the beginning, I haven't done this myself, so it's just the first attempt. And, and no, there was no problem with the certificates of the Zavix, Zavix repository. The problem was with the old... Uh, open SSL library on my Raspberry Pi that uh, fails to retrieve the HTTPS certificate of the repository. So what I did here is just apt upgrade. And the thing is that on a Raspberry Pi, it took almost an hour. Uh, that's why there was a break in the video. So right now, let's try to run it again. Uh, you can see all the commands I did. Um, update, upgrade. Yeah, so we're still on the on the version 10. And now I will try again to add a repository. Uh, there we go. Yeah, and as you see, now everything is fi fine. So we are good. Uh, then this. Everything should be fine as well. And now we basically can install the Zabbix proxy. Zabbix proxy SQL light support, which means that the database uh, will not be the MySQL, not the Postgres, but it's going to be SQL light, which is the smallest option. So the installation is done and uh, basically the only thing that has left is to edit the config file of our newly installed proxy <clears throat> and it is, uh, let me do it like this, at czabixproxy.conf. We're basically looking for the server, which is the IP address of my Zabbix server or, or your Zabbix server in your case and uh, I can see it here, um, this 192.168.56. 101 and then we also need to look uh, host name Zabbix proxy i will change it to subscribe by the way yeah if you want to support this channel you can always subscribe and you can find a lot of links in the description uh, to social media again follow subscribe uh, buy me a coffee um, all of that uh, then <clears throat> what else do we need to change? We need to find uh, database uh, DB host DB name and uh, DB name like for SQLite pad to the database file. So we can leave it as Zabbix proxy. I will just add a TMP. So the database is created in the TMP. Uh, that about it. Uh, let me again check. Subscribe was the host name with a capital S. Yes. So I am saving this. And then I'm going to my um, front end of my Zabbix server 6.4, going to the proxies, create a new proxy. We must use the same host name that we define in the proxy config file. So subscribe. Proxy mode is going to be active. Click add. Last seen never. And uh, right now I will systemctl start Zabbix proxy. And uh, we can check the log file, creating database. So, well, what initially happens, the proxy starts, it checks if there is a database in the pad that we provided. Uh, if not, then it's creating it automatically, like no steps are required from, from my side. And uh, again, since the Raspberry Pi is not too powerful machine, it will probably take a couple of seconds. It may take a little bit of the time again because the proxy is not too powerful machine, but eventually, as you can see, my proxy has started and uh, we are unable to connect uh, to my Zabbix server. Okay, so we've hit another issue, but uh, the problem is not with what I said to you. The problem is with my network, just because my Raspberry Pi is connected to the Wi-Fi and my computer is connected with the Ethernet and I have the Zabbix on the virtual machine 
behind a virtual network interface. So it's pretty complicated. And as you can see, I have my, uh, this one is Raspberry machine and uh, just a simple ping to my Zabbix server does not go through. That's why we, we are failing. But if I try to ping from my Zabbix server to the Raspberry Pi, the ping goes successful. So what I will try to do is uh, I will change my proxy to work in a passive mode. And hopefully that will allow me to uh, show you that the, the communication actually works. And proxy mode one, uh, save this. And then I will go also to my front end and change uh, this to passive mode. And then I need to fill in the IP address of my, um, of my Raspberry Pi. And I, there it is. No, it's not. Uh, here it is. 109. There we go. Uh, IP description passive should be good. Um, like this. Refresh configuration. And I will also restart the proxy because I just changed the proxy mode. System CTL restart Zabbix proxy. Uh, this will take a second or two. So the proxy is restarted. Uh, let's check the log now. Tail minus F for log Zabbix, uh, Zabbix proxy. Not allowed connection. Uh, proxy data request from the server. Okay, so we can see IP address connecting is actually different. 18.10. Let me edit again uh, the config file, 1810, like this, restart again Zabbix proxy and check the log file again. The proxy is started, received configuration from the server and right now we should see that uh, the last scene has updated and again it refreshes. So this probably was one of the most challenging videos for me, as I said, it's done without any preparation and we've hit multiple issues and then overall it took almost three hours, but uh, we got to the result. So that's the way how you can install the Zabbix proxy on your Raspberry Pi uh, version 10 in, in my case, but it's going to be the same for anything else. And as usual, if you have any questions, just uh, hit me up in the comments, uh, like, subscribe and, and do all the good stuff. So thank you and see you later.